Hello everybody, I'm Steve and welcome to Green Side Up. I'm down on the plot today in the polytunnel and I'm about to sow some peas. Um, but I want to talk first about this compost. I, um, I was given a bag of peat-free compost. There's a man in the village who buys it, he bags it up and he sells it locally and he, he does well for himself. But this here is a peat-free compost and it's something I'm well, a, a little bit dodgy and shaky about. Um, I tried it when it first came out and I try a bag every second year or so and have a look at it and it's never really fulfilled what I wanted to do. For starters it, it generally doesn't hold on to the moisture very well for me um, which is a problem because I need watering done and I, I don't need to be going back to hundreds of plants and watering them more often than I do with my normal compost. The second real problem is the price. Now I think if you know, we all know that peat compost is going to be phased out very soon. Peat, you know, we need to protect it. We need to do these things. But until that happens, I'm going to continue to use a compost that is based on peat. But this comes very, very close. It's very good. I mean, this, I say, is peat free. Look at this. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. The only real problem I have with this is the cost it's twice the price of a normal compost. Now, I don't know whether if when peat is phased out, if the compost companies can up production and are able by selling multiple units to reduce the price. If that happens, this will be a good thing, a very good thing, because I think compost companies will struggle at the price brackets that they're charging at the minute to continue in the same vein as they are at the moment with the peat with the peat compost. So I'm just hoping that that eventually happens because as I say, this is twice the price of what I would normally pay for compost, but it is good and I'll show you. Here's some peas I sowed. There's nothing wrong with them. In fact, they're looking really nice and healthy and a good green. They're just bordering now on the point where they need a feed, but they'll be going in the ground soon and they will get that feed. Anyway, that's enough said of that. I say I buy that off a man in the village. That's another Steve. I say all, all Steves are great. <laughs> but anyway, I've got a gutter here with ends on. Um, hopefully you can see. I've got some holes drilled in there. Every six inches along there. And I'm just going to fill this up. These peas I'm sowing now are for pea shoots to go with salads. In about a week or two's time, I'll sow my proper peas. And I don't grow podded peas anymore. I grow monge too instead. I have a preference for them. Simply because podding peas take such an age to get a decent crop out. It takes such an age to do it. But these are pea aldermen. I mean, these peas in themselves, if you grew them up a support, would grow six foot tall. But I just want the shoots from these. You pick a pea shoot off it and you've got that flavour of pea in in your salad, the salad mix, and, and that's and that's lovely. So that's pea alderman. And I'll just cover that up. And then I'm gonna soak this compost and then leave it to drain. I'll show you in a minute what I do with these because now every mouse in Christendom wants to get at this and eat those peas. So I hang it up and I'll show you how I do that in a minute. Just keeps it out of harm's way. So there we go, that's the first stage. Right, I'll just, right, I'll just show you what I do. I've got a loop strong strong rope really I'll just pull the loop open my crop bar and my polytunnel or anywhere else you can hang it you've now got a loop take your peas and I just feed them through the loop now they are now out of the way of any mice that might eat them 
or any slugs. I'll put one or two slug pellets on there in case there's any in the compost. There shouldn't be, but you never know, and it's not going to do any harm. So I'll have two slug pellets on there, and if one disappears, I know there's a slug in there that's dead, and I'll replace the pellets. So I'll water that, I can see instantly when I when I come in in the morning. I'm obviously not going to leave it here, it's right in the middle of my path. It'll go in the small tunnel, but hung up just the same. But that keeps vermin out of the way and uh, protects your crops before they've even started. So there we go. And they're safe just for pea shoots, and when they get up to about this high, I'll start picking them, which will coincide with all my salad stuffs and other stuffs that I've got in, in the small polytunnel. Okay, I've got my big, um, big tanks here for my carrots. And in this one, I've got Purple Sun. And in this one, I have Amsterdam Forsink. And you can see the temperature there, maybe, hopefully. Yeah, 10 degrees in there. Now, I sowed these very early. In, back in February, we had some very, very cold temperatures here in the UK. And I believe it was the same in North America and right across Europe, really. And then that went and the weather warmed up and I took a punt, sowed these seeds, it was still too cold and I thought they're not showing, um, they're gone and I was getting ready to re-sow and they started popping up so I'm really pleased with that but right now I'm going to go and add two of these carrots and sow some more and do a little test as well. So I have bought and had delivered a massive pile of uh, green waste compost here. So this is the compost, I'll just zoom in and you can have a, a little look. So it's reasonable, it's full of lumps, it's not been sifted very fine, but it's reasonable. So I was given these tubs by a neighbour, throwing them out, no longer wanted them. And they're about 17 inches tall and perfect for carrots. And I'm going to sow some in there now, but I'm going to conduct a little trial. Three of them have got green waste compost in them and the top inch is sieved green waste compost just so that the seed get a good grounding in there and the fourth one is the rest of that bag of the peat free compost so i can do a comparison trial on the two so basically there's no moss peat in there which you know is fantastic and we'll just compare them against other carrots i'm going to sow later in the season so just over here in one of these long beds i'll fill one of these with carrots uh, in a couple of weeks when the overnight temperatures warm up a little bit. But for now, I'm going to get on and sow these. Right, so the carrot I'm sowing in these tubs is Autumn King 2. Hopefully you can see that. This is the peat free one, the one with the label in. And I put five holes in them in. Autumn King give you deep, big, decent carrots like that. So I'm hoping these will be deep enough. And uh, I'll just put a couple couple of seed into each hole. I'll turn this around so you can see. This is why I love this little seed dispenser, it's so controllable. Just as long as you're careful. I say two or three in each hole and uh, we can pick them out when they're ready to start growing when they're through. So, God, getting a bit slapdash there. So, that's it, I'll just cover them up and I'll put them away in the polytunnel. Later on, they'll probably want some protection. But that's it for now. Right, last year I had great success with this little bed here. And what I did was I just put some bricks around a load of this green waste compost that I got on last year on top and essentially made a very quick no dig bed there was no cardboard underneath and in I think it was June or July I'm pretty sure it was July well I'll double check and write it on the screen now when I sowed some um, some parsnips and they were Palace F1 that was the variety that I tried last year and sure enough by Christmas I had parsnips of a reasonable length not very great, they were only a sort of thin distance, but they were a good roasting size, a whole roasting size. So I determined that this year, whenever I did sow them last year, I'm gonna go a month early with them. 
again in the polytunnel because this no dig bed is now going to be extended around the corner a little bit once all this chard has, got, has gone I will extend it round but for now I want to try another little trial because <laughs> I can't stop doing the trials but um, so yeah um, I want to try the, the, one of the bigger varieties and that is gladiator so I'm going to put a couple of little rows of seed in here and we'll just see how they get on through the season now I've got a second variety and it's one I've actually never grown before so again that will be interesting too in fact look <laughs> I've actually left one in but they were the sort of size and, and just scrubbed and roasted whole as they are without peeling they were gorgeous so there we go that wasn't planned by the way <laughs> But uh, yeah, it just shows, doesn't it? So I'm going to be very sparing with these. These aren't my main crop. My main crop will go outside in one of the beds. But I'm just going to put a, pop a few in each of these little here. I'm not going to be, I can be very prissy about it and dig holes and, and I've done that before. But for this little test, it's only just see, what I'm concerned about really with them is them going to seed too early. So I thought, well, I'll give them a full season's length and see how they go. I mean, outside, it's gonna be a month or so before I sow them anyway. It's gonna to be towards the end of April before I actually sow them outside. So I just thought, well, I'll see how they go inside and compare the two varieties. I have got the same seeds as the ones I sowed last July, Palace F1, I've got those and they will be sown in some of that new dig area, new no dig area I'm creating just around this corner and uh, I know they'll give me the lovely smaller whole veg which I like so we'll certainly get a crop from all these different places but it'll be interesting to see how these bigger stamper parsnips do with a longer season. I don't know about this white gem. I mean, I've say I've never grown it. I don't know if any of any of you have. Have you tried it? Is it any good? I'm not wasting my time. <laughs> I don't care. It's another trial. It's another test, and that's what. That's what I enjoy. I enjoy doing these tests and trials and finding out what works, pushing the boundaries. That's what I'm all about. And I'm not happy unless I'm testing something. It keeps the interest levels up for me. So there we go. We've got white gem and gladiator. In fact, that's the seed package from last year. Parsnip Palace F1. Right, so that's that. There's my lunch. <laughs> okay, so in the little polytunnel, I've got a ton of brassicas. Then some flowers, Cosmos and Iris. And some more flowers and some herbs. And these are all leeks, broad beans, peas. These are all onions or shallots celery beetroots and finally down this end is lettuce these lettuce are going out very shortly into the ground there's a tray of cut and come again and here's some ones that will grow on and eventually replace those but it's this one now that I want to concentrate on by doing another one. So I've got that one growing. When this one's finished and done, the other one will be ready. And that's for cut and come. It's almost like very similar to a microgreen, but it isn't. I'll let them get a bit bigger than that. But it's for just the spare leaves. And I may eventually even just take them home and have them in the back garden, but we'll see. 
Right, so I've got another tray ready for salads and that's what I'm growing, salad leaves, mesclum mixed. Again, another freebie from a magazine. There's only a very small amount of seed in here, but it should be enough to do this tray. I'll just mix that up. And again, I'm using green compost here again, green waste compost. And we'll just stack that away with the other lettuces in the small polytunnel. Right, so we've covered peas for pea shoots today, um, carrots um, on a trial as I'm doing with peat free compost against green waste compost, but either way, both are peat free. Um, and the parsnips, the double parsnip trial, and I've got my lunch ready for that, and added some more salad stuffs. Now, any of this stuff that you saw, in the small tunnel, any of that stuff in there, you can still sow now. It's not too late to sow anything. The only things I think you might struggle with are aubergines and perhaps peppers. But if you if you quick and get them sown now, you should still get a crop. Again, chili peppers. I mean, that's something I don't grow. We don't get on with them in our in our house. Um, even if you don't get a crop from them towards the end of the season, pot them up overwinter them at home or in a greenhouse and you can plant them out again next year so get sowing get growing and i'll see you very soon take care look after yourselves bye bye